Hey guys, I thought you might like to take a closer look at those ceramic capacitors I was having trouble with and see if we can figure out why they didn't work out so well. Now you may recall I recently restored a National TV 7 electrostatic TV and it used ceramic capacitors to couple the horizontal sawtooth waveform to the cathode ray tube but on the vertical they used paper film which I then replaced by plastic film so it used ceramic doorknob caps just like this 500 picofarad for the horizontal sawtooth but it used 5000 picofarad film capacitors like these for the vertical now guys have tried using these for the vertical and they found there were distortions and why would that be? Well, ceramic capacitors have a few drawbacks, one of which is the capacitance varies with applied voltage. In other words, the dielectric constant changes when you apply voltage to it. They're also frequency dependent. So why would you use these? Well, they are cheap, and depending on what you're using them for, you can get away with it. Well, a couple ways to compensate. One is use a capacitor rated for much higher voltage than you are going to be passing through it, or use one of much larger capacitance. So say you were to get like a 10,000 picofarad, 20,000 volt ceramic cap, might work out okay. But then they're getting pretty big and expensive, so you might as well just go with plastic film. I've got a little test set up here to see if we can explore this a little further. I got a sawtooth generator, WaveTech 148A. Going through a capacitor of interest, I pulled out 4.7 microfarad ceramic cap. This is one of the ones that came out of that vertical. And then I want to put a load on it. Well, I wasn't quite sure what to use, because if you put a capacitor in a resistor like this, that's a high pass filter. So, for some frequencies, they're going to get attenuated, no matter what, even if it's a perfect capacitor. But if I put too high a resistance, even a crappy cap, it's probably going to pass through a waveform just fine. So, I've uh, been noodling around with this a little bit. Right now, I've got a 60 hertz, more or less, sawtooth wave. Top is the input, bottom is the output, and I put a potentiometer for the load. So if I increase the load, we can definitely see it's very distorted now. This is curved, but that might be due to the load being too much. So I'm going to back it off to where it's not distorting. Right around there, and then swap out the caps. But before I do that, let's put it to where it is distorted. And let's increase the frequency. Get it up to around 15,000. Notice it's not distorted even with that heavy load. That's what I was getting at about them being frequency dependent and voltage dependent. And of course, this is, as I said, is acting as a high pass filter as well. So we've got a number of variables working here. All right, so let's put this back to 60. And swap out the capacitor. And see how the other one behaves. I'm hoping that it will be linear. Or rather, I'm hoping it won't be, so I'm, I'm increasing the load to where it's just looking like a clean sawtooth. And I'm hoping when I put the ceramic cap in there with these same settings, it's going to be curved. Here's a little ceramic cap installed, and this is not what I expected. It's not distorted, or at least not very much. Huh. Well, uh, I'll try swapping in the other one. Maybe 
And actually, there were three of them total in that circuit. I'll try putting each of them in there. Maybe the one of them was defective. Or uh, maybe there's a DC bias on there along with the AC waveform. Uh, although that I can actually simulate because there is a DC offset to control on this. Interesting. Ah, interesting. Yeah, with the DC offset, it's now distorted because that DC bias is altering the dielectric, which is distorting the waveform that's going through it. I bet that's what's going on. It's not the signal itself, it's the DC bias plus the AC signal on top of it. Huh. Now, to really verify that, I would have to crack the set open and probe around and put the ceramic caps back inside, which I'm not inclined to do. But, I bet that's what's going on. DC bias, altering the dielectric constant, causing waveform distortion. And I'll put the electrolytic back in there just to show you that that will not have the same issue. Okay, here it is with the electrolytic bipolar capacitor installed. Zero DC offset. No distortion on the output. Increasing DC offset. No distortion on the output. So I think we have found the source of that distortion. DC bias on the capacitor. Altering the capacitance, I imagine making it much less capacitance, and it's distorting the sawtooth passing through it. Ah, you might be thinking, how do I know there's a DC bias on those caps? Well, check out this 7 microfarad. One end of it's labeled right in the schematic, minus 4.5 volts. The other end is going through vertical linearity, through a small resistor to ground. So, there's going to be a DC bias across that capacitor for sure. Now, in totally unrelated news, you may have heard that Radio Shack has filed for bankruptcy and they're closing all their stores. So, I've paid my local one a few visits to pick up some great savings before it closes for good in about two weeks. Stuff is marked 50, 70, 90% off. So uh, I'm grabbing some stuff that uh, I think uh, I may need in the future, like some tuner cleaner, get some test jumper leads, some magnetic wire, some electric paint. I figure this might come in handy to replace controls that have a burned out spot in the carbon track or making circuit board repairs and a whole bunch of adapters most of them gold plated nice stuff so a lot of like F to RCA F to BNC, BNC to F and just every combination some right angle adapters handy for when you get equipment like mine pushed up against the wall and you want to make connections in the back put some right angle connectors on there so, if you haven't been, I suggest you check out your local Radio Shack, pick up some stuff before they are gone for good. And now back to the Safari set. I'm working on cleaning up the optical assembly. It's still pretty dirty around the edges, but I think what I can do is take off this, take off the bottom, and this is actually some kind of like rubber gasket. I'm thinking I could probably pry that off pretty easily and then clean in all these nooks and crannies and also be able to clean out the inside. Yep, that got it. So this is a partial mirror and this is a curved mirror. That's probably a front surface mirror where the reflective material is on the top of the glass and you really don't want to mess with that. So I think I'll try using a really soft cloth just in one edge, and if it seems like it's marking it up, I'm not going to go any further. Maybe I'll just use some compressed air and blow it off, because see there's already a lot of fine scratches on it.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a front surface mirror, so just the very lightest of cleaning, just some compressed air. I'm not going to mess with it. I was able to get this off from around this glass, and I've got most of the coat off. It seems like this side is the glass, and the other side is the partial mirroring, so I don't want to mess with that either. So, it's as good as it's going to get. I'm going to put it back together, and that will be that. All right, the set's playing rather well now, and normally I'd be wrapping up a project like this, but I do have two of these, and I figure, well, I've got the parts out and the schematics out, it's fresh in my mind. I might as well go ahead and recap this one as well. Now, I don't think it'll take that long, because this one is already working fairly well. And I know how to take the cabinet apart now, and how to get those circuit boards, and which parts need to be replaced. So, uh, unless anything interesting crops up while I'm uh, recapping it, hopefully I will just pick up in the next installment with both of these done and playing next to each other.